Hello. Let's continue talking about uncertainty in this type of game. So why don't you pause the video and figure out what should happen. Okay. Now, as with the last few games, the easiest thing to figure out is what player two should do if player two ends up here or here. If player two ends up here, L is definitely better than M because 18 beats 12. And if player 2 ends up here, E is better than F because 53 is bigger than 10. Player 1 will take that into account. So player 1, if nature makes him a lefty, will say down leads to 0. And player 1, if nature makes him a righty, will say bottom leads to, well, 0 as well. Um, now let's look what player 2 should do if he ends up here. If player two is here, player two is uncertain as to whether he's on the left or the right, at least, if you, you know, at least until he figures out what player one is going to do. Player two should say, well, you know, if I somehow knew I was here, I'd want X because 10 is greater than two, whereas if I knew I was here, I'd want Y because eight is greater than four. So player two can't figure out what he would do until he learns a bit more. What about player one? Well, actually, it's pretty easy. If nature makes player one a lefty, it's actually pretty easy to figure out what player one should do because, look, um, player one will say, well, down gives me zero and up gives me, oh, five no matter what. Well, player one, if he's a lefty, he's definitely going up. He knows this before he figures out what player two is going to do. Player one, if he's a righty, also will say, well, bottom gives me zero, where if I go to the top, I get, well, one or seven, but one and seven are both better than zero. So player one, if he's a righty, will say, I'm better off picking top before I figure out what player two would do, you know, because of his uncertainty. So now let's figure out what should player two do here. This is a pooling equilibrium. Player two when he moves, is not able, you know, if he's, in, if he's in this uncertainty, if he's in this information set, doesn't figure out whether, doesn't figure out whether he's on the left or the right. So the uncertainty over player one's type, and remember player one's type in this game, nature is making player one a lefty or a righty. So the uncertainty regarding player one's type is unresolved, and that by definition is a pooling equilibrium. But player two still has to move. So he's left to figuring out what maximizes his expected payoff. Player two will say, okay, well, if I pick X, there is a 50% chance that I get 10, because there's a 50% chance I'm here, and I, if I pick X, I get 10, and there's a 50% chance I'm here, and if I pick X, I get four. So my average payoff is 0.5 times 10 plus 0.5 times seven, which is four. If I pick Y, player two will say, well, there's a 50% chance I'm here, and if I pick Y, I get two, and there's a 50% chance I'm here, and if I pick Y, I get eight. So if I pick Y, I get a expected payoff of 0.5 times two plus 0.5 times eight, which is five. Since seven is bigger than eight, player two should pick X, okay? And this is our equilibrium. Let's go on to yet another game. So, uh, notice for this game that I've changed the probability for nature. Now nature moves left 20% of the time and moves right 80% of the time. Again, please pause the video and figure out what you think should happen. Okay. As with the other versions of this game, the easiest thing to figure out is what player two will do here and here. If player two is here, he's gonna pick L because 18 is greater than 12, and if he's here, he's gonna pick E because 53 is bigger than 10. Now, what should player two do if he's here? Does he have, is it a clear, is it a clear outcome? If player two are here, and you know, before he figures out what player one's gonna do, he would say, well, if I knew I was here, I'd want X. If I knew I was here, I'd want Y. Oh no, I can't figure out yet what I'm gonna do. I need to learn a bit more. What about player one if he is a lefty? 
Well, player one will say down leads to one, up leads to, oh, look, more than one. Oh, good, yay for me. So I know if I'm player one and nature's made me a lefty, I want to go up, and, and player two uh, knows that as well. Now, what about if player one is a righty? Well, again, yeah, he knows that he should go up because if he goes up, he's going to get either four or seven, depending on what player two does. But we already know if he goes down, he's going to get zero. So he should again go up. So this is another example of a pooling equilibrium. And the last thing we have to solve for is what will player two do if he finds himself in this information set, if he finds himself right here. And he'll have to calculate his expected payoffs. He'll say, well, if I play X, there's a 20% chance I get 100, and there is an 80% chance I get 4, which leads to a payoff of 23.2. Whereas if I play Y, there's a 20% chance I get 5, and an 80% chance I get 30, which leads to a payoff of 25, which causes player 2 to go with Y because 25 is bigger than 23.2. And that means if nature picks left, we end up here. And if nature picks right, we end up here. So we'll end up here 20% of the time, and we'll end up here 80% of the time. All right, let's do another game. Now we're back to 50-50. OK, please pause the video and figure out what's happened. OK, have you done that? All right. There's a good chance you made a mistake because I'll give you a hint. In this game, there are actually two possible equilibria. So if you didn't find two equilibria, why don't you pause the video and search for the other? Okay. Let's first identify the pooling equilibria in this game. So in the pooling equilibria, um, Player one will go up and top. So player two does not have the uncertainty resolved for him when he moves. Let's see why this is an equilibria. First, again, it's easy to solve what player two should do here or here. If he's here, he'll pick L because 18 is greater than 12. And if he's here, he'll pick F because 7 is greater than 3. Okay. Um, player one will realize that going down, if he's a lefty, is very stupid because look, down gives him one no matter what, up always gives him more than one. So player one, if he's a lefty, definitely going up. Player one, if he's a righty, will say up gives me four or seven potentially, down gives me five. Oh, I can't figure that out until I know what player two is gonna do. Player two, will say, well, if I knew I was here, I'd want x, because 6 is better than 0. If I knew I was here, I'd want y. So player 2 will say, gee, I, I don't know what I would do until I, I figured out what player uh, 1, if he's a righty, is going to do, or I figure out something else. So what we need to do here is if we, we can't figure out everything, we maybe start taking guesses. So recall what we know. We know this, this, and this. What we haven't yet determined is what player one will do here and what player two will do if he's up here. So what I want to do now is tell you there is an equilibrium where player two picks Y and player one, if he's a righty, picks top. So the things I've circled are an equilibrium, although as I'll show you in the, in, uh, the next uh, piece of paper, it's not the only equilibrium. Let's see why this is a no regrets equilibrium. Okay, player two, he's in, does player two regret L? Well, no, because if he ends up down here, why would he ever regret L? Plus, he'll never get down here, so it's a bit of a complicated question of how could player two regret doing something if he never ends up here. But anyways, even if he did end up here, he would never regret L. And if player two ended up here, he would never regret F. Player one, if he is a lefty certainly doesn't regret going up because going up in this equilibrium gives him three, going down gives him one. Player one, if he's a righty, um, also doesn't regret going top because top gives him seven, and if he went bottom, he would get only five. Finally, player two does not regret playing Y in this equilibrium because in this equilibrium, 
you know, the only the only different thing a thing player two could do would be move from Y to X. And if he if he um picks Y, his expected payoff is um 0 0.5 times zero plus 0 0.5 times eight, which is of course four. Whereas if he picked X, his payoff would be 0 0.5 times six. Um, plus 0.5 times zero, which is an expected payoff of three. So this is an equilibrium. Given what everyone else has done, none of the you know three players want to change what they did. But let's also see why there exists a separating equilibrium. Okay. So let's see why this is also an equilibrium. Now, in this equilibrium, player two, again, doesn't regret if he's here picking L, doesn't regret picking F here, because seven is, is greater than three. Player one still, again, it's not going to regret going up, because going down is stupid, but in this equilibrium, going up gives him two, going down would yield one. Here, player one, if he's a righty, also doesn't regret um, what his choice of bottom now, because if he goes bottom, he gets five, where if he goes to the top, he only gets four, because in this equilibrium, player two plays X if he finds himself here. Now, does player two regret playing X if he finds himself here? Well, no, because player two in the separating equilibrium will say, well, look, if, if somebody is, you know, if, I, if I'm up here, I know that nature picked left and I know I'm on this side. So given what player the two player ones are doing, I do not regret playing X over Y if I'm told that I'm in this information set. Because given, you know, given this and this, if I end up playing Y, I would get zero. So there's also a separating equilibrium given these payoffs. All right, let's do another game. Let's see, why don't you pause the video and figure out what happens. All right. Actually, there is no equilibrium in this game, at least is how I've defined um, equilibria. There's going to be a mixed strategy equilibria, but I'm not going to worry about mixed strategies with these kind of games. Let's see why there's no pure strategy equilibria, and let's, we'll rule out both the separating and the pooling. So let's start with the separating equilibria. So this is not an equilibria. I wrote that, so if you're just looking at this video quickly, you won't think that I, what I've circled is right. This is not an equilibria. The circles are things that we know are true. Let's, let's review why. Well, if you circle L, right, if player two ended up here, definitely, you know, would definitely pick L because 18 is greater than two. If player two ended up here, would definitely pick F because seven is greater than three. Similarly, um, if player one is a righty, player one is going to go top because bottom leads to zero and top will lead to, um, to one. What about what player two will do here? Well, if player two were here, he would say, if I knew I was at this place, I would want X. If I knew I was here, I'd want Y. So player two wouldn't know what he would want to do here. Similarly, player one right here can't figure out what he would do if nature makes him a lefty until he figures out what player two would do because he knows down yields five, but up could do more than five or could do less than five, could do more than five. So I've put squares around things to take a guess, right? So there's, there's two things we don't know. We don't know what player one will do here and we don't know what player two will do here. So we do know that this player one, if he's a righty, is gonna go top. Let's consider the possibility of a separating equilibrium. So player one picks down, okay? Well, if player one is gonna pick down, that tells us there can only be an equilibrium where player one, if he's a lefty, picks down, if player two, who gets to move, picks Y. Okay, because look, in an equilibrium of this and this, player two is gonna regret not playing Y if he ends up in this information set because you know he knows he's here and if he picked X, he would have done better. So this and this mandate Y, but this is still not an equilibrium. So why don't you pause the video and figure out why this is not a no regrets equilibrium. Okay, 
The reason is because player one, if he's a lefty, is going to regret going down if player two, if he ends up in this information set, is going to pick Y, right? Because player two is going to say, well, I picked down. Oh, but wait a minute. I'm in an equilibrium in which player two would pick Y if I'd gone up. No, 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 no. I, I very strongly regret that. So this is not an equilibrium. Okay. And finally, let's see why there can't be a pooling equilibrium. Now, in a pooling equilibrium, player one is a lefty, goes up, and, you know, if he's a righty, he also goes up. And um, from the expected payoffs, well, what should player two do if both sides go up? Well, if both sides go up, player two, you know, in this pooling equilibrium would say to himself, well, if I play X, I get 0.6 times 1 plus 0.4 times 0. Uh, so that's 0 0.6. Whereas if I played Y, I get 0 0.6 times 0 plus 0 0.4 times 1. So that's only 0 0.4. So player 2 would, uh, would respond with X. In a pooling equilibrium, he would regret not playing X. But why is this not a pooling equilibrium? Please pause the video and figure it out. Why is this not an equilibrium? Okay, it's not an equilibrium because if player one is a lefty, he's going to regret this because look, he's ending up with zero, whereas if he went down, he could have gotten five. So given everyone else's strategy, there is, there is no no regrets equilibrium because if everyone sort of writes down their strategy, then reveals there's going to be someone who said, oh, if I'd only known, I would have done something different at least if we restrict ourselves to pure strategies in these kind of games, and that's what I will always do. Thank you.